Hey guys, this is Bruce, and welcome to another podcast, a pod of Convo Courses, where I'm going to be talking to you about um, how to get in cybersecurity and how to market yourself. If you're interested in getting into a career field that's going to grow in the next five years, probably double to what it is right now, where you have job security, and I've, I've never had to worry about whether or not I'm going to get a job. Um, if you're wanting more job security, then this is a great field to get in. And you're talking to somebody who, who's been doing this for 20 years, and I'm I'm talk I'm speaking to you from inside the industry. All right. So if you have any questions on Facebook, on YouTube, on TikTok, live on podcast, then this is a great question. The time to ask any of your questions um, regarding IT and cybersecurity. So let's keep it to that. I'm not interested in anything having to do with uh, anything except cybersecurity. So let's just keep it to cybersecurity questions. All right. That being said, let's get into this. Um, if you didn't know, I am the owner and proprietor of combocourses.com. It's a site where it teaches you how to do get into cybersecurity. And specifically, my sub where I'm the subject matter expert is something called security compliance. Security compliance has to do with if you've ever gone to a bank, if you've ever used a retail, if you ever used a point of sale device, if you ever um, gotten a, a card from the DMV, like all of those things require something called security compliance. That that's the rules and the regulations that go into an organization's cybersecurity. So not necessarily implementation of the cybersecurity like firewalls or IPSs, IDSs, and all that kind of stuff. Um, not the technical implementation, but more like how does this organization whether it be a bank or your hospital or your or target or walmart or whoever how do they comply and keep security on their systems that's what i do and that's what i teach people how to do i've been doing this for a very long time specifically for the government the federal government but i've also done it in the private sector and i've done it in uh, for states i've done it for a little bit for other countries when it pertained to the u.s so let's get into this. Um, so we've got combo courses. I also want to tell you that I'm doing real steady um, podcasts on Podbean. If you're if you want to get some information on that, um, just go to Podbean dot uh, uh, combo courses dot Podbean dot com and join me there. I'm doing lives every week. I'm putting out more content. If if um, if you prefer to listen to this or if you're at your job and you want to listen and learn and stuff, this is a great opportunity for you to do that. And I'm open to any kind of questions you have specifically to this uh, to this genre, to this uh, area of my area of expertise. And a lot of the, one of the good things about this community is that if I don't know something, somebody in this community is not a subject matter expert on that thing. And that's one of the things that I personally love about this community that we've been building. So let's get into this. Um, I also want to let you guys know I have a book. I'm going to be breaking down and giving you a lot of the stuff that's in this book, okay? So if you actually stay tuned for this, I'm going to actually break down exactly how to market yourself, how to get in this career path, and uh, how to level up. If you happen to be an IT person, if you happen to be a, a cable jockey, a person who's laying cable for people, doing internet stuff, if you happen to be in... Uh, areas like healthcare. If you happen to be in stuff like banking, this is a really good opportunity for you to transition into a career field that pays better, that has more security, and has a lot of opportunities for the next 20, 30 years to come because cybersecurity is not going anywhere, okay? And it's not all super technical. That's another uh, mis misconception about cybersecurity that I, that I like to dispel that myth. All right, so let's get into this. Let me show you guys what I've got going on. I've, I'm writing a book right now that breaks down one of my main questions. So one of the main questions people ask me on TikTok, on Facebook, on YouTube, everywhere is, Bruce, how do I get into this career field? Like I've been trying for years. Maybe I'm in IT. Maybe I'm in the hospital. Maybe I'm, I'm in healthcare. I'm in this other industry, and I'm trying to get into break into cybersecurity. I'm trying to break into IT. So what I'm doing if I could actually switch this thing over, let me see. So what I'm doing is a book where I'm going to tell you how to get in cybersecurity and IT. This works also for any other career field as well. How to get into IT and how to uh, market yourself in, in this field. This is something that I've been using for years. This is not something that, um, this is not theory for me. This is something I actually do in practice all the time. So it's going to be a series where I'm going to add uh, lots and lots of value to you 
over the years as I release these books. But let me just get right into this. Okay, so here's the sections of the book. What I'm telling you is, first of all, the expectations, what I've been able to do successfully. And then I break down all of the steps you're going to take to actually put this stuff on your resume, particularly if you are in IT. If you're in IT, the good news is you can very quickly ramp up to cybersecurity by putting certain things in your resume. So one of the things I talk about is how to do an ATS style resume. An ATS style resume means applica uh, application tracking software. This is what most employers are using these days. If you happen to be putting your resume out there and you're not getting any traction, then it might be because the resume style that you have is not correct. And sometimes when you put your resume out there, um, it's if you make it harder on the employer to actually um, uh, take your the data in from your resume, you know, it's they might look look you over and look for somebody else. So I'm teaching you how to use it. In fact, I'm just giving you a template. If you go to convocourses.com and look for my course, it actually has a free template you can download right now that has the template that I use that's been successful over over the years. But so that's what I do. I tell you, look, here are the tools that you need to set up for this. Um, here's the places we're going to be posting this this um, your resume and one of the main key features that I do aside from the format and telling you how to do all that stuff is I actually show you how to do the keyword research how do you find what career path to do because that's a really important thing you need to know what path you're doing because here's the thing you can see there's misspellings in this book this is a first this is a rough draft okay <laughs> <laughs> what I do is I bang out the I just write it as fast as I can. I take all the knowledge and I dump it into this book and then I go through it like two or three times and edit it myself. Then I get it give it to an editor. So that's why you're you might see some misspellings. There's some errors in here. Just ignore that stuff. That's gonna be cleaned up as I release this. This is gonna be released on Amazon on my on my personal site on and then I'm, I'm gonna advertise it everywhere. Anyway, so what I'm gonna show you how to do is how to find a specific category of cybersecurity because this is one thing that some of the gurus out there and some of the subject matter experts and some of the pen testers and stuff they don't talk about this and what that's that this is a huge career field cybersecurity is huge so you don't have just pen testers you would think the cybersecurity is just a bunch of people in a closet hacking stuff and that is not a could not be further from the truth this is actually a huge career field and it's getting deeper and deeper. And just to give you an example, like in my book here, I'm, I'm breaking down some of the categories that's coming from uh, the government. The government broke down this. Uh, what they did was they had this initiative where they broke down all of the main career paths of cybersecurity. It's called the National Initiative for Cybersecurity Careers and Studies. I know that's, that's a mouthful, but this is what they called it. Uh, to, uh, take that up, that issue up with the government and why they name stuff like this. But. Uh, also known as NICE, NICE Cyber uh, Cyber Workforce. If you if you Google that, you'll find this what I'm talking about right here. So what I'm breaking doing is breaking this down in a practical way that you can use this. So it breaks down things like um, securely and provision. So what does that mean? That's like people who architect and design secure systems. And then you got oversee and govern. That's kind of what I do. That's making sure that the the system is secure, making sure that we manage the security and manage the uh, the risk associated with that system. And it also goes into legal advice and then program management and all that kind of stuff. So as you you could probably tell that that's not super technical or in the weeds or uh, hands on type stuff. That's more like organizing make sure the organization itself as a whole is doing what they're supposed to do so cybersecurity is a huge field An another area that we talk about is the the hacking and the defense and actual people who are on the system uh you know on the actual firewall doing the configuration putting the rules in those guys do exist you know i'm not saying sitting here saying that they're irrelevant or they don't exist i'm saying this field is so huge that you've got people who are way in the weeds all the way down the mathematics, right? Because you've got people who do uh, cyber, um, they, they do cyber crime investigations, forensics. You also have people who are doing crypto cryptography. So that is also considered a part of cybersecurity, by the way. And this thing that breaks down all those different areas that you would find these different um 
these different categories. And then it breaks it down even further into specializations. So what my book is doing is going to do and what I'm going to show you how to do like a practical way to do this for yourself right now is uh, what they do is they break it all the way down to work roles. And then once you figure out what ro work roles it is, the first thing you got to do is figure out what part of cybersecurity you want to go in. Because it's not just enough to say, I want to go into cybersecurity. You got to be like, I want to go, I want to be a pen tester. I want to be, I want to go into cryptography. I want to go into forensics. I want to go in, I want to do what Bruce does. I want to do uh, information system security officer work. I want to do compliance. You got to be down to that granularity. And the only way for you to get there is for you to do some study on your keywords. All right. So that's one of the things I break down in this book. Now, what I'm going to do right now is show you exactly how I do this. So what I'm going to do like live right here, right now, let me just switch my screen here on TikTok. So what I'm going to do right now is show you what I do. OK, so there's three main sites in the U.S. OK, three main sites. And, and this this is different. By the way, this is different for each country if you want to work in another country you have to find a whole nother set of um a whole nother set of uh sites to go through in the u.s there's a top 10 uh group of sites that work the best and just off the top three is going to be uh, linkedin dice and monster so those three sites are the best sites that you can go through, go to. But there's like 10 or 20 others that you should definitely apply to if you're trying to get a cybersecurity job. If you're trying to get really any job, because those are the top sites. Now, if you're in the nursing, if you are doing something completely different like sanitation engineer, if you're doing something completely different like civil engineering, there might be other sites in for your industry that are better for you. But you got to do that research. I'm talking about cybersecurity. I'm trying to get you... Um, prepped to get into this field in cybersecurity by knowing not only the keywords but also the top sites now the top sites for that we're talking about is monster linkedin and dice and you can actually and indeed is another really good one but these are the sites i'm going to show you real quick so once you do your resume all right so once you first of all the first thing you need to do is figure out what keywords right so let's say you did your research and you know i want bruce i want to go into forensics Forensics. I'm going to show you real quick how you can find keywords for forensics. If you didn't, if you didn't know a lot about it. If you hadn't done research, if you're just starting out, you just go to the search engine and type in forensics. Now, this is a very broad field. Like forensics itself is super broad. If you ever watch that show CSI, they don't really talk about computers much. They talk about dead bodies and and extracting the maggots from the bodies and stuff like that. I mean, it's kind of a crude thing, but that's exactly what they're talking about, entomology and all that kind of stuff. We're talking about computer science. So let's type in forensics computers. Now, I happen to know that they call it digital forensics, but let's say you didn't know that. So you, I just typed in forensics and then see why, and it um, automatically came up with some keywords. This is how you do it. Now, this works if you're doing, if you're doing this with cybersecurity analyst, if you're doing information system security officer, information system security period uh cloud security anything you any kind of subject matter you want to do this also works for any other field you want to be in you just type in a little bit and it starts to come up with some of the keywords so let's type let's look at this one right here computer forensics analysis this is leading us down a rabbit hole of all the security keywords that we need for this particular career path now i'm going to go ahead i'm on monster.com by the way and now i'm searching for this career but now where do we get the keywords once these jobs come up i'll show you so another thing to note is the salaries now if you didn't know this salary is for information security analyst and they don't always so the name you notice the names none of these are saying forensics that's because that's that's how this works like if you go into whether you're doing cryptography whether you're doing whatever it doesn't always have the exact name of the title of the role the work role that you want and that's why it's very important for you to do the research on your own to figure out what is in this career path okay what are the key words you can see a pattern already information uh, security analyst information security analyst uh, cyber intrusion detection analyst these are all analysts right Let's look at this one, Cyber Forensics Analyst. So all of these jobs have analysts work in them. Okay, that's why it's all these are coming up. The key words are going to be in the responsibilities, the requirements, and the skills, 
and sometimes they'll have okay yeah desired certifications just off of this right here we can get the dna that's associated with this particular job role uh this work role right just off of this one thing right here we can we can pull a lot of different gold out of this right here now let me let me just show you what i'm talking about in the responsibilities what you want to do you want to read like four or five of these to get an idea of what this job is all about first of all because you might not even want to do it right you might have watched a csi one too many times and you're like oh i want to be a hacker i want to be i want to do forensic like it's the job is rarely what you think it is you know what i mean so you you definitely want to do your research and if you can talk to some somebody like myself who's been in this field for a while and ask their ask them like how do you like it you've been doing this for 20 years how do you like doing this job is this something that you think i should do what are the pros and cons those are the kind of questions you really want to ask let's get back into keywords so if we're looking at keywords here i'm seeing a couple off the top of my dome right here if you see words like this that you don't know what the hell it is pcap that's a key word right there. If you see, um, there's a couple key tasks in here, stakeholders. There's a couple of key words in here already, but you want to read through responsibilities because you might you might not even want to do this job. Collects network device integrity data and analyze signs of tampering and compromise. Okay, so signs of t uh, tampering and compromise is one of the things you do uh, as a as a um, forensics guy. Now let's look at let's get a little deeper into this desired skills look at this now this is a gold mine of all kinds of keywords see all this stuff right there these right here are tools it says you need to be experienced and proficient uh with the following tools in case uh ftk sift these are all tools of the trade for a forensics guy very important like just like a plumber, like if you are a plumber, there's certain tools that you need to know, right? There's certain things that, that you basic things in that field that you need to know. If you don't know them, you got to get to know them, right? Especially if you're brand new at this, you got to get to know what those things are. Now, I'm talking to people who might have a little bit of IT experience or something like that. For forensics, you, you probably have to know at least the basics in IT. Um, very, very important. So. Now let's get back into this. Let's get back into finding out key keywords here. So these are all keywords right here. And now what you want to do is take these. You got two things you can do from here. You could take this and put them into a copy and paste it into a, a blank text file. You can do that. Another thing you can do is put it into something called Word Art. Um, and Word Art, what it'll do, what Word Art does is it makes a visual representation of what um of what you found so let me just show you what that what i'm talking about that word art.com and it's it's just a tool to kind of help you to to visualize what's going on so here's word art right here you can create your own and it it comes up with this site here and what you'll do is you'll input the words you'll copy them and then import them in so let's let me just show you what i'm talking about so we're going to go to i'm going to go back here and I'm going to copy. And you want to do this on two or three different jobs. I'm going to copy this. And we're going to import what we just copied into WordArt. We're going to import it. Now, they, they take it right here. So I just copied it. Boom. I, I put it in here. And I'm going to import these words. And now what it did is parsed out every word that's in the text that I just downloaded. So what I do, let me backtrack a little bit. So what I did was, what I'm doing is, I'm going through two or three of these different websites two or three of these different jobs and I'm gonna copy and paste those into a one file one word document then I'm gonna take those and I'll put them into word art and then we're gonna do get a visualization of what this looks like to see what what areas are the most important that we need to focus on tools look at this for so forensics we can see that tools is mentioned a whole bunch of times out of this, this is kind of a light list. Like it's only mentioned twice, but you want to get like four or five different ones and dump them in there. But you kind of see the idea of what is happening here. And then the tools that are mentioned the most is in case. Now, in case is a forensics tool that's very expensive. You might be able to get a free, um, a free version of it, trial version to, to mess around with it. But this is not. This is not a cheap. This is one of the most expensive 
uh, tools out there for forensics. So in case I'm very familiar with, um, I'm familiar with that it's used quite a bit in the government to uh, – what they'll do is if, if somebody's done a crime on a computer – I could tell you some crazy stuff for forensics that's happened. It's, it's pretty dark. I mean <laughs> the stuff that they're – if you have a forensics guy in there, then whatever the hell's on that computer is pretty, it's pretty bad, right? It's not something I could talk about without getting flagged by every – you can kind of come up with an idea of what it is. It's, it's murder and it's it's like stuff like that, right? Or worse, or worse. Think of something worse than that. So anyway, so that's what's on people's computers. Um, <laughs> it's just bad, man. Anyway, so in case what it'll do, one of the things it does is it'll take a hard drive that people, somebody has tried to clean, that they've tried to delete stuff, and in case can see all the stuff they deleted. The stuff's still on the computer after you delete it, by the way. Even if you put it in the trash and then emptied the trash, it's still on the computer. And in case, looks at the ones and zeros that were originally written on the disk, lifts those up, and then it can reconstruct those into files. Like if they had an image or a video or whatever, it can reconstruct those and give that to whoever's doing the investigation that they'll use for a court case or whatever. FTC, I believe, does the same thing. It's like an open source ver version of in case, if I'm not mistaken. And then there's some other tools here. But yeah, this just gives you an idea of how you can pinpoint different uh, keywords that are in any kind of genre and any kind of anything that you're trying to do. So now that we know how to do keywords, the next thing we want to do is put that in our resume. Now, you don't want to just put this in any resume. You want to put it in a AT, uh, ATS style resume. Let me show you what I mean by that. So I have an example of that in my book here and I'm just going to show you that real quick and if you want an example of this there's a couple things you can do you can go and google how to find an ATS style resume those exact words or you can go to my site combocourses.com and look for um, a cybersecurity marketing course and that has a free downloadable um, of what I'm about to show you and it has the actual format that you can download and use it for your own resume ATS style resumes are so important because what the and see I'm using word art here. I'm telling you how to do this. I'm walking you through it in this book. That's all the stuff that's going to be in this book that's coming here real soon. So I'm looking for the actual resumes. It's I got a lot of stuff in here. It's breaking down everything, every aspect of what I'm telling you right now, but in greater detail. Um, I'm I skipped over a whole bunch of stuff that you should that you should know. <laughs> so I'm trying to find my ATS style resume in here. Uh, man, where is it? Okay, ATS. It should be here. Okay, ATS style resume, all the sections. I give you an example of what that looks like. And then we go to there. Here, we, here it is right here. All right, so here is an example of an ATS style. Is this it? No, that's not it. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, this is it. This is it. See how simple this is? This is an ATS style resume. It's very, very simple. It's, it's not got a lot of stuff in it. So it will have the person's name. Um, it doesn't have any kind of nothing fancy. It's nothing fancy going on with this. Now you can make a fancy ATS style resume, you know, and I'm, I'm not wasting my time with that for this. I'm just telling you exactly how to do this. So you'll start off with the, the, a breakdown of what's going on of the person. And then you'll put the, uh, your contact information and, uh, you'll put, um, a breakdown of who you are. Another thing that I do in the summary, by the way, is I'll put, I'll put, uh, hey, I want to ro work remotely because that's an opportunity for you to say that. Another thing you can do is say, hey, I have a security a clearance. Like you want to put the security clearance right up top if you can. So you can put that in the summary. So you right here, you just put summary. This is ATS style resume. This is it right here. You put the name. You put. The contact information, you put a summary, you put education up top, you know, in this style right here. See how this is? And the reason why the format of this matters is because when your resume is when your resume is uploaded onto these um, sites, when, if you put it on Indeed, that's another thing you need to do. You need to put it on Indeed. You need to put it on Monster, Dice, uh, LinkedIn. And you need to put it on as many sites. If you don't have a job. Your job should be to put this on as many resume as sites as possible. That's what you should be doing. Okay. Another thing I show you how to do is how to protect yourself because another, one thing that's happening right now lately is these freaking scammers are scamming people to get their social security number so they can do identity theft and all that kind of stuff. So 
I've never fell, fallen prey to that because the way that I do my resume, I don't put my real name. This is crazy. This is crazy. I don't see anybody doing what I'm saying. I do not put my real name on the sites. Not I don't do that until I'm like on a screen. I'm talking to a screener, like maybe the second interview, then they know my real name. They do not know my real name till I'm on the second interview a lot of times, right? Because I'm screening them as they're screening me. Like I'm screening the organization. Is I do not put my real phone number. I do not put my real – I might even put a different email address, like a fake throwaway email address. Like you can even do that. But um, I put a different name, an alias. I put an alias, something similar to my name, but it's not my actual name. I do not put my real – uh, phone number, I'll put like a, I'll use a Google voice. I tell you how to do all of this in this book. All right. All this is coming. Uh, as soon as I finish this, I've got to do the first draft of this book. You can see all kind of misspellings and stuff in here. I write the book really fast and then I'll go through it and then edit and stuff like that. So I just want to tell you guys, like, I just want to inform you, this is how I do it. And it's been working for me. I have not been without a job. I mean, we've, you know, we've had several different, um, collapses in the economy where we have recessions we've had like that stuff does not affect me and i'm not trying to only get affects me in like okay if i'm going to walmart and the prices are higher or the gas is hot jacked up or something yeah that, that affects me obviously but i'm talking about with a job i'm good like i'm always employed and the reason why is because i'm in cybersecurity. i'm one of the i'm in one of the fastest growing industries in the world and not only that i stay ahead of the game by marketing myself so um, uh, people are constantly contacting me about jobs. And I'm not sent, telling you this to toot my own horn. I'm telling you, you can do this too. You can do all the stuff I'm doing too. Everything I just told you is what I do. Everything I just told you is what I do. And that's how I'm able to stay ahead of the game. I, put, I, I have a dope resume with all the keywords for the industry I'm searching for. It's all over my, it's all over my resume. It's in the, it's in the, uh, it's in the, the uh, summary it's in the it's in the the actions that I've done for an organization in my work experience. It's in my skills. It's all throughout my resume. And then I put that out there. And here's another thing. If you're in IT, if you're on the help desk, if you are laying cable for people, if you are in the hospital, if you are wherever you happen to be, if you've touched a computer before, okay, you have to put all the security stuff that you've done for that industry. You have to put all the stuff you've done. Because that's really important. A lot of times what people will do, with it, what they won't do, is they won't put the cybersecurity actions that they have taken. And, and that's, a, that's really bad. So that's another huge thing that you have to do. Okay, so let me keep going here. I'm going to answer a few questions. I'm not going to stay on here too long. But if you have any questions, feel free. If you happen to be watching me, feel free to ask me any questions that you have about getting into this industry, about cybersecurity, about risk management framework, about security compliance, anything at all. I've been in this career field for a long time. I'm going to tell you from the perspective of somebody who's been doing this for some time, uh, real world um, examples, real world practical things that you can use to, to upload to upgrade yourself all right i'm answering some questions on youtube as i do once a week um and if you didn't know i'm all on tiktok um i'm answering questions there uh very one-on-one -on -one type questions i'm answering questions on my email i'm doing work for people like helping people with their resumes i do all that kind of stuff if you're interested in that kind of thing where i'm going way deeper and doing like a one-on-one -on -one, like just me and you corresponding not like this kind of stuff you can text me or you can email me at combo courses at contact at combo courses dot com um, or you can go to combo courses dot com and find my contact information there. Um, I'm out there. So let me answer a couple of these questions. Somebody said watch one of my videos and said this is a gold mine. Wow. I appreciate that. Great compliment. This is when I was doing a video about help desk to cybersecurity and trying to help people helping people with that. Um, somebody said, how can I purchase this book? It's some old book that I wrote. Um, if you didn't know, I've got some books out there on audio, on Audible. So if you're interested in getting into, if you like, like listening to books, I listen to books quite a bit. Um, and I just want to tell you guys, I have a book out there. If you go to audible.com, if you happen to have it, if you don't have Audible, actually you're in luck because they'll give you this, they'll give you like a free trial. Um, but you can... Go just type in RMF uh, ISO 
And these are two of the books that I have right now. Uh, over over four hours worth of content to listen to if you're interested in this. This will also help you with uh, CAP. A little, if you happen to be doing a certification in CAP, it will help you a little bit in Security Plus, but it's like a small portion of Security Plus, so it's not going to help you that much. But CAP, this helps you probably. This is 60% or more of the stuff that's on the test. Uh, it's not catered to you taking the test. But it will help you to understand like the practical implementation of risk management framework. So there's that. If you're interested in listening to this, it's on Audible. I'm also on Amazon. Just type in – you can just type in Bruce Brown or you can type in um, NIST 800 Control Family. My book is out there as well. Um, and then you can also order it directly from me on ComboCourses.com. This is the site right here. Tons of free stuff here by the way. Um, I People – are really upset about selling um, products and things, but a lot of the stuff that I have on here is actually free. And if you go to YouTube, if you follow me on YouTube, it's just so much free stuff on there. Like a lot of the stuff I say on here or that's on my website or that's in my books, it's there. Um, you just got to dig for it. You know, if you want a little bit deeper dive, then that's when you want to get the book or get the course itself. Um, that's, you know, when you're serious about this, that's when you want to start getting the book and, and getting in deeper in this and asking direct questions. Okay. Somebody asked me if you want to be an ISO, what certification do you need? That is a great question. Let me break this down to you. So ISO work is normally for the federal government. And let me just put you on some game right here. So ISO work, the federal government goes by something called 8140. So 8140, DOD 8140 is a breakdown of what every contractor and government employee should have as far as certifications uh, in order to get in this field faster. So what I'm doing right now is I'm actually showing you what 8140 looks like. You see this? What I'm and for those of you who are listening to me, I'll explain what you're seeing, what I'm, what we're seeing. So this is 8140. And essentially, it's approved baseline of certifications. It changes from time to time. Lately, every about six months, they've been updating this. So there's a couple things here that I'm see that I'm not seeing that's been either removed or added. In fact, let me see if I can go to the newer version of this. If you go to, oh, what is it? Dissa dot mil. Yeah, and you might see me. Okay, Dissa dot mil. I think it is Dissa dot mil. 8140. They have the one of the most up to date versions of this thing I'm trying to look for. 80, they used to call it 8570, and it's a it's all the approved certifications. So if you go by this list right here that we're looking at, this is a list of approved baseline certifications. Let me explain what this what's going on with this thing. If you can see this, if you can't, let me make it a little bit bigger here, but I'll also explain it. So they have they have this broken up by technical and management uh, architects analysts and auditors okay those are the main categories and let me just explain each one so the um the iat means information assurance technical that just that's basic technical troubleshooting um it might be designing or configuring systems these certifications are needed if you're a level one a level one is basically like a help desk person this is a person who has a basically a one-on-one -on -one relationship to one customer at a time they somebody calls in and says hey i have a trouble ticket that means like something broken and they're they're not connected to the internet and they happen to be on the fourth floor and then you or you call them on online maybe they're you know your remote worker or whatever but this is a first line of defense for people fixing computers help desk uh customer service field technician one that kind of thing they will, they're expecting you have an A-plus certification as listed here, a CCNA security, which is – that's a very hard security. That's a very hard certification. I don't know why they put this here. I didn't make this, so keep that in mind. <laughs> Network plus CND, which I don't even know what that is, SSCP. One of those things, that's IAT level one. That's a, And remember, IAT level one is a help desk person. Now, if you happen to be upper level, like let's say – not only do you do help desk stuff, but you also do some networking stuff. Like you might have, you might be responsible for fixing the network on a whole floor. This is like network engineers. This is like, uh, this is like people fixing a whole LAN, a local area network. P 
people who's responsible for a local area, a virtual local area network. So they're, they're kind of having to look at server issues as well as switching and networking problems locally as, we, as well as like one-on-one -on -one customer support. So what certifications do, does an IAT level two, an information assurance technical level two uh, need? Uh, so that's a CCNA Security Plus, a CISA Plus, a CI. So all of these things. Security Plus is a big one. These these are the ones that they're looking for. Okay, and we're going to get to the Information System Security Officer in a second here. I'm just building up here so you can kind of understand what's going on. Now, IAT Level 3. So this is a, an enclave normally. Now, these guys are not only doing like one on, they're kind of beyond the one on one type, type thing because their skill sets are so versatile that they're needed to do bigger things. They're needed to do more like uh, working with the architecture team, working directly with servers. They're, they're handling stuff that's like local area network to local area network. So these guys have professional level certs. They're very, very in the weeds but also high enough level to where they have to know, see the bigger picture of what's going on with the network. They're doing enclave to enclave. That's like one lo local area network to another local area network and possibly WANs, which is a wide area network and that's way more complex. So this is CCNP security. That's a very difficult certification, a professional level cer uh, Cisco certification. A CASP, which is a, also a professional level cert that's no joke. A CISSP, high level cybersecurity certification. And then some others, uh, GCIH, which is incident handling, and I, they just added this one, CCSP, which is I think a cloud, a cloud uh, certification from uh, ISC two squared. I think I believe that's what it is. Okay, now let's get into I, ISO, and the uh, ISO, if you didn't know, is an information system security officer. So that is kind of what I do, and I can kind of give you in a, in a nutshell like what an ISO, an information security person does. So this job is typically, your day looks like this. You're doing a lot of meetings. That's what your day looks like. It's a lot of meetings because you're, you're talking to other uh, people within your organization, stakeholders. You're, you don't have to be a, a subject matter expert in, say, firewalls. You don't have to be a subject matter expert in, say, networking or routers and stuff. But you do have to know enough to be dangerous. Like you do have to know enough to communicate what is happening with the organization. Your responsibility as an information system security officer is to manage the risk, is to help the organization to manage the risk to the organization so they can maintain their security posture. Now you might be like, Bruce, what the hell are you are you talking about? What are you let me spit it in layman's terms. That means this the organization has a certain level of security and they need to maintain that. And what does that mean? Like Think about it. Windows is constantly changing. It's constantly having upgrade to patches. There's constantly vulnerabilities coming out. There's constantly new education that needs to happen with the users. There's all these new threats that are happening from day to day. Everything's constantly changing in IT. Well, that's where an information system security officer comes in because our job is to make sure that no matter what changes happen, the organization stays compliant and stay secure at a certain level. It's very challenging, especially if the organization has a lot of different technologies or if it's a very large or organization with lots of stuff going on. So let's get back into what actual certifications does this information system security officer need? And I'm gonna show you here right now. So let's go back to the 8140. So 8140 up here is, an ISO is considered a a manager type role okay it's a manager type role because you're dealing with you're not just doing in the weed stuff fixing computers you're not just working with firewall they might have you do some stuff like that but your time is mostly spent coordinating with the organization to make sure that the organization is doing what they're supposed to do I said organization so you're you're talking to c-level execs you're talking to upper level managers. You're talking to the to the system administrators. You're talking to users. You're talking to user reps. You might even be talking to the customer. So it's a lot of meetings. So it, it's a manager type role. You got to be able to communicate effectively. So a CAP, a uh, CAP is a a certified authorization professional. So what they do is exactly what I'm talking about. They make sure that the organization can maintain a certain level of authorization so that the 
so that all of their documentation is good, so that all the security compliance, security controls on their system is good. And let me break this down to you. So CAP is a good one. Another one is CI, well, I'm typing here. Another one is a CISSP. Uh, CISSP is a good one. Security Plus is also a good one. Those three, I say, were the top uh, certifications that an ISO is typically uh, typically has. Um, now this might evolve. Cap CASP I notice comes up a lot. CISA comes up uh, from time to time. But look at these. What I'm what I just did was I logged into isc2squared.org and I'm showing you the different certifications. Now Cap this is the certified um, authorization certification. So security assessment and authorization certification. So that's what it is. Certified authorization professional. That's what it's called. So this is one of the top. This specifically focuses on NIST 800. So NIST 800 is what the federal government and states and some other organization, contracting organizations will use to ensure that you know what you're doing when you're talking about security compliance um, for an organization. So these, let me just read a couple more here. A, a couple other ones that an ISO is considered uh, uh, they're, they're good for an ISO is let me just name a few that I've seen in the industry a CASP, a CAP, a CISM, a CISSP, a GS, uh, GSCLC, and uh, a recent add on, these two right here, is CCISO and a HCISPP, which is normally for hospitals. This is like HIPAA compliance and stuff. That one's getting gaining ground right there. And this is listed on the DISA site. So this is <laughs> that's a dot mil site. So that's that's a big deal right there. So those are the main ones. I hope that answers your question. Let me keep going down questions. If you guys have any questions whatsoever, feel free to ask me. I've been doing this so long. I just off the top of my head. I, I know this stuff. I've just been doing it so long. You know, I don't know if that's necessarily a good thing because it's pretty much all I know. <laughs> you know what I mean? So let me see. Um, let me answer a couple questions here. Somebody said, uh, "How do you get? How do you get this?" I'm looking for. Okay, what are, what are they talking about here? A hundred. Oh, okay. I posted a job, uh, a job, a remote job where you're making a hundred k. Um, and somebody says, "How do you get this?" I'm looking in for this right now. Um, I took a cybersecurity course, and now I'm studying for the interview questions. I would like to know how you do this boss okay so i do this like in the beginning of this of this session uh, i talked about it and i can just give you a brief rundown the first thing i do is i make sure all the keywords are on my resume so every every category of cybersecurity has a different set of keywords for example for example at one time i was proficient at like two or three different um parts of cybersecurity. I was I was proficient. I'd done it before. I'd had certifications, everything, right? And those two were one, I was a SIEM engineer. That's a security information uh event manager engineer. I could build them from scratch, set them up, create content for it, and it can monitor all your logs. You know, I did that for like three years straight. So I just I just knew it. And then um another thing was I was an information I still am an information system security officer. I know that means I like I know how to allow an organization to be compliant with certain security standards. And then another thing I was good at was cyber security analyst work. So those three things, those are three separate resumes. OK, they have three separate keyword sets of keywords. So what I did was I made a resume for each one of those. Each one has different certifications that are more relevant. I put those on top. Each one has different. Some of them really require uh, a security clearance, like ISO and uh, cybersecurity analyst usually requires a security clearance because you're working in like a a SOC, a security operations center, which is has classified information and blah blah blah. But the the seam really didn't need a security clearance, so I could even leave that off, and I was still good. M my point is, every single time you Whatever career path you're going in, it has a different set of, of keywords. And so what I do to make myself more marketable for this is I get keywords for each one of those work roles. 
whatever it is. And to do that, you can you can actually research it and figure it out, right? And I'm not telling you to lie in a resume. I don't recommend that. A lot of people are like lie in your resume. Why aren't you why aren't you lying on your resume? Well, pr me personally, I say don't. No, do not lie on your resume. Do not put your picture on your resume. Like put your picture on your not resume, but but um unless you're on in I guess EU does that. But put your picture on your profile. Some people are like, nah, because I'm black, I don't want people to see that. I can't get jobs. Nah. Why would you want to work at an organization who doesn't want you? You need to put your picture there. And if they don't want to work with you, you shouldn't want to work with them. That's how I feel about it. I don't want to work somewhere they don't want me. So I put my black face on my profile. Go look at it. It's up there right now. So that's number one. Like, put your, Don't lie in a resume. The reason why I don't lie on my resume is because I don't want to get in there. And then they I don't, they think I'm some I'm freaking going to walk on water. And I don't. Not for that particular technology. Not only that, but in the res in the actual interview, they will ask you these questions and then they will verify what you sold them. They will call your employer and ask, hey, did Bruce do this X, Y and Z? They'll do that, especially as you go higher up in the echelons. Right now, if you want to fudge some numbers of how long you work the place and you know that it's not that big of a deal, but do not put certifications you don't have. Do not um, <laughs> don't lie about your degree they're going to check that stuff right um don't like this is some obvious things you shouldn't you shouldn't lie about on your resume because they will ask you i'm going through the interview process right now you better believe they're investigating me they're looking at every part of my life i'm having to put in there right because you can't you can't just lie on your resume so i don't recommend lying on your resume put the real deal on your resume but not only that put the key words for what you're doing on your resume so that way when uh so that way when you put the when you upload this into linkedin into dice into monster and you need to put it on like 20 or 30 different job aggregators okay you need to put on 20 or 30 different ones and that's why i say you shouldn't use your real phone number or your real you should use an alias because you're going to get so many calls from all kinds of people and you don't want to get scammed anyway so that's what you do that's what i do and that's how i've been able to get all these offers for remote 100k type jobs or more um and, and that's how you do it and i'm writing a book right now if you're interested in this if you're super deep into this if you're very serious about this i'm writing a book right now it's going to be out soon um and if you if if you're interested in this, the very beginning of this podcast i broke down exactly how what i'm telling you i broke down i showed you my like how how i pick these keywords out how i find them all that kind of stuff. If you're interested in this, a book is coming that's going to break all this down in great detail about how to get into cybersecurity in particular. But you can use these techniques for basically any any job where you have to apply for a resume. Any job you need a resume, that you could use it for that. So uh, let me see. I got a couple other questions. It says um, on TikTok, it says, I just got a free ISO 2 uh, course. And uh, let me see. Cert is free when I'm done. Have you heard of this course? Yes, this is this is great. Like, thank you so much for asking that question. Uh, so I've been I've been telling everybody about this new certification that's coming out. Like, what's happening right now? If you guys didn't know, is that the government's hurting for cybersecurity positions? There's something like seven hundred thousand careers uh, that are um, empty slots. Like we in desperate need of of people to get in here so what's happened is there's been this huge push from nonprofit organizations corporations and government entities to actually get people into this field as entry level and so isc2 squared has this new certification that's an entry level cybersecurity certification and right now it's free it will not be free forever because i isc2 squared i don't know if you knew this but they don't they don't mess they don't mess around they do not these guys have the top cybersecurity certification in the world arguably in the world it's called cissp i have this certification this certification changed my life it's a high level cybersecurity certification that talks about nothing and everything <laughs> but it is so good at marketing me like all i got to do is put that on my resume i could probably just have a blank page with just cissp on there and i'd probably get hired that's how powerful this resume and it's the reason why this certification is so powerful is because they've done a great job of marketing it 
That being said, I'm saying this to tell you that they're now giving this damn thing, this right here, for free. This is an entry level for you to get into cybersecurity. This right, this right here, I'm showing you, it's called Certified in Cybersecurity CC. Now, from here, you can build into other, uh, into other, um, this is an entry level, but you can t take this and build up to a higher level certification. That's why this is so powerful. And these guys, this is not some fly by night organization this is one of the top if not the top and best cybersecurity certification organizations in the world on planet earth currently right now so this is a great path if you are actually looking into this this is a great path for you to do do this they're doing it for free they're giving it away for free this will not be free for long i guarantee you because they're trying to compete directly with comptia Security Plus, that's what they're trying to do. And eventually, this right here, this certification, I mark my words, this certification right here, this certified in cybersecurity will be on this sheet right here. This is 8140. This is 8140, uh, also known as 8570, approved baseline for certifications. They will have CC on this. I bet you it'll be like right here. They'll put it right here alongside A plus certification, alongside C and D and all these other ones. And once this goes on here, it'll be way more marketable than it is right now. Right now it's a free certificate. It's it's brand new. People don't really know about it. People are kind of figuring it out. Like they're kind of trying to compete with this and the Google support IT and the Security Plus and those kind of certifications that are entry level because the government is making this huge push to get more and more people in this field. This is a really, really exciting time to get into cybersecurity. This is this is a rare opportunity where they're trying to open the doors, but you this is not a field where you can just come in off the street and know nothing. You have to do some work. Like even if you come in and know nothing, you have to do work to understand the basics of information technology, right? That's all I'm that's what I'm saying. So um, this is a great opportunity. Let me see, I got a couple of questions that says. How does a civilian get a security clearance? Okay, so there's a couple ways. Um, just just so you know, I've been doing this for uh, some time, and I've had security, all kinds of security cl clearances, uh, from public trust all the way up to top secret type certification uh, security clearances. Another one misconception that you that I want to dispel is that you don't need a security clearance to get into cybersecurity. They're two separate things. Okay, a security clearance. Is just verifying that you uh, are who you say you are. They're ver they're doing a, a, a anywhere from a basic security background check to make sure you're not uh, that you are trustworthy to work in their organization with s secret information. They're making sure you're not linked to any kind of terrorist organization or insurgents or militia organizations. You'd be surprised. You'd be surprised how many people are associated with it. Because every time they ask me, I'm like. Haha, <laughs> that's ridiculous. I'm not. But no, there's really a lot of people who are associated with these organizations that want to take down the government, that don't feel like they have some kind of issues with the United States government or they're tied to another government. They actually happen to be working for another government and they're trying to get in and infiltrate. You'd be surprised how many people this this applies to. Anyway, so a background check is just trying to see. If you are who you say you are, if you don't have, make sure you don't have any crazy credit issues that's going to affect you to work on their job, making sure you're not like a severe, a, a super predator that's killing people or something like that. Um, yeah, they're trying to just do that. That's separate from cybersecurity. Okay, cyber. A lot of cybersecurity jobs need a security background check because this, the nature of the information that you're going to be having access to. And they want to make sure that they can trust you to protect their systems, but they not every not every job requires a security background check. Okay, cybersecurity is they're separate things. You can be a janitor and need a security clearance. Okay, so the question was, how does a civilian get a security clearance? There's a couple ways. Number one, work for an organization who will get you a security clearance. If you happen to work in the uh, DMV area, that's um, D.C., Virginia, Maryland area, there's so many jobs, not just cybersecurity. Uh, you might be a groundskeeper 
and mowing grass and have to have a clearance. I'm dead serious. You might be painting the inside walls of a, a skiff that need you need a clearance. Uh, you might – there's all kinds of clerical jobs, uh, secretarial jobs, uh, name something, janitors, uh, anything like can get you – so you would – one way that you could get in is if you had a job – if you got a job at a place that required a clearance, a lot of times they will pay for you to get a clearance. They will pay for you to get the clearance because it costs money to get a clearance. Another thing is you can – there's sites. Somebody contacted me the other day. They were trying to get me a clearance. Like they didn't, they didn't know, I guess. They contacted me and saying, hey, we can get you a clearance and stuff. So there's, there's private organizations that can get you a clearance, but you're going to have to pay for it. It's not cheap. Just to give you an example from what I heard, a security, a secret uh, background check is like $5,000. And then a TS is like $10,000. That's what an organization has to pay to get you a clearance. And then a public trust, I don't know. Public trust is like here. Secret clearance is here. And then above that is top secret and all other White House, all this other stuff. So. Yeah, so you can you can get into a position, a job that requires it, and then they'll let the organization pay for it. That's probably the best way. The other way is to get it privately and pay for it yourself. That's another way, but then it has to remain active. I don't know how all that stuff works. but uh, So those are the two ways that I personally know about how to do it. So And I could be wrong. Anybody else, you guys know of another way to do it, please chime in and, and, and inform me of what's going on. Um, let me see here. Somebody ask... Um, Hope that asked your, answered your question, by the way. Uh, somebody asked, um, so I just signed up and I have to take an exam. Yes. So so I believe that 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 I see two squared. They have a they have a course. All right. And I believe the course is free if it's still free. They have a course that you can take that breaks down what's going to be on the test. And then you 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 go to that course you study for it. If it's still free, hopefully it's still free. It was, they were saying it was a, a value of $199, $199. But even if it costs $199, it's worth you investing in yourself. It's 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 worth the risk. It's worth the risk. Anyway, if it's still free, because just last week it was free, you take the you go through the course that I believe is on Coursera. It's either on Coursera or it's on their website. Okay, sign up for their website. They'll give you a breakdown of everything you need to do. And then from there, you will take the test. Like once you study for it, you take the test. Uh, somebody said, no, they're paying for it once you finish the course. Uh, there you go. Okay, thank you for that, uh, Odaya. It says, no, they're going to pay for it once you take the course. And there's uh, only one million openings. Okay, there you go. Okay, I stand corrected. So, let me let me correct myself. So what he's saying is once you it was free for a while. It was it was actually free like a like a week ago or something. <laughs> I'm telling you. So um, now you're going to have to take the 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 course. And then once you take the course, I think it was one ninety nine. Then you you'll take the test, pass it, get your certification. So let me see. You have to take a test. Yes, it's. This is yeah. There's a, there's hurdles. You have to take the test to get the certification, but it's worth your invest. If you are serious about this, it's worth your time. Okay, let me see. I got a couple other questions. Somebody said, um, "I barely see 100% remote opportunities. Most people keep wanting people to be on site. That's true." And Bri uh, Brandon, I, I would add to that and say, um, a lot of the security clearance, a lot of the so cybersecurity jobs that require security clearances do require you to be on site, at least like a hybrid on site. But I would say that there's a lot more remote jobs opportunities than uh, than there were before COVID because it was it used to be really hard to find them. Now they're everywhere. And I can show you how to find them real quick. I'll show you. Uh, let me see if I can show you on um, LinkedIn. If you guys didn't know, I have a LinkedIn page. Uh, you can search me out on Bruce Brown for the win. Let me show you if on if you guys happen to be on LinkedIn. Here, here I am right here. If you type in Bruce, go to LinkedIn and type in Bruce C I S S P R M F or something like that. You'll find me. There it is, right there. There I am, right there. And so, 
uh, join me. Uh, I'll definitely add you. I've got a, a lot of people wanting to add, and I'm, I'm always open to, to add people, or you can talk to me online, all that kind of stuff. But, okay, let me show you how to find remote jobs. Okay, let me see. Let's let's say you were looking for a cybersecurity analyst job, right? So I'm just just randomly pick one off, out the air. So now you will check this out. First, you'll go jobs. And the reason why you want to pick jobs is because there, it's going to show you everything. It's going to show you companies, posts, schools, groups, people, all that. You want jobs. Okay. So search jobs. Then post a date. You don't want any time because this goes back like a year or something. You want something within the, at least the last month. All right. So let's look for the last month. And then if, this one's uh, up to you. They got internships, entry level, associate, senior manager, whatever, right? You ch choose that. If you don't really care, leave that blank. And then remote, let's go to remote jobs. So here it is right here. You're going to on site versus remote. So you've got hybrid, you got remote, and you got on site. You just click on site. Now, you notice it went from 17K jobs down to 3K jobs. I'm on LinkedIn, by the way. So I just went to jobs, stuff in the past month, and then I went to remote on site this is a new feature by the way they didn't have they used to have all of this stuff and now they have it on dice they have it on monster they have it on almost every site because remote jobs are so prevalent now after covid so here you go here's some remote jobs for cybersecurity analysts which i just typed in and that's how you find remote jobs right there in five minutes i just showed you how to do it and you can do this with every site with monster with linkedin with uh with that with with dice all of these show you how to do remote jobs and if you go to dice let me see if this one's ready so here's here's my profile on dice.com i'm about to turn this thing off man i'm getting so many contacts with these guys so there's a way to search for remote jobs let me just show you here let me i'll do the same thing so cyber security i'll just type in cyber security i didn't put a location in um i'll hit search and check this out. It comes out with this page right here, taking a little bit of time. And then look, right at the top, remote only. If I hit remote only, it, you notice it went down from 4,800 jobs to 600 jobs. So yeah, there are less, Brandon, uh, to, it, I, I could piggyback on what you're saying. There are quite a bit less, but there are jobs there. I mean, look at this, there's 600 jobs here. I mean, granted, I didn't search for I said any date, so that's that's probably what's adding to that. Let's do it the last seven days. There's going to be quite a few less. Oh, still 126 jobs. Look at that. These are all remote jobs. And all I did was type in cybersecurity. Look, 100% remote cybersecurity analyst. All of these are 100% remote. Now, you got to double check because one of the things I noticed about these jobs is sometimes they'll say they're 100% remote, but then when you do a, an interview with them, they're like, well... Well, it's a hundred percent, but we want you to come into the outside. Is this a hundred percent or not? <laughs> yeah, you got to do an interview with them to make sure and ask them, is this a hundred percent remote? You know what I mean? Like you usually straighten that out with the with the actual um, screener once you once you talk to them, ask them, and then sometimes it's it is remote, but it's like. 50 percent travel or something like there's always there's some kind of catch sometimes with the job you just gotta make sure you you weed out those gotchas with the remote jobs i just went through this that's why i know a lot about it you know <laughs> i've been doing working remotely for the past seven years now like i've been working remotely for a long time crazy it's crazy to me like i've been working yes it's been seven years i started in 2014 working remotely and i've been working remotely ever since and uh, i will never go back I will never go back. <laughs> All right. Um, and that being said, if you guys are interested, I have a course on how to work remotely. It's on Combo Courses. Uh, go check it out on ComboCourses.com. Uh, Just work, find the remote jobs course, and then I have it out there. And I'm, I'm, I, I might even write a book about that one and break it down. So it's like a twenty twenty dollar book or something like that. I might, I might do that because I, I've gotten pretty good at getting remote jobs and winning those remote jobs positions okay let me see link to the course um i'm assuming you're talking about the c the cc uh let me see if you're interested in this we were just talking about this this course right here which is an entry level isc2 squared course which they're given um 
I believe you have to pay for their training. And then I think it's 200 bucks for the training now. It was free like last week. Unfortunately, no longer free. And then after that, you take the, the test. And I think they give you the test for free, if I'm not mistaken. Correct me if I'm wrong, TikTok. Somebody on TikTok correct me on that one. I, I appreciate that. But, yeah, here's the link right here. It's uh, isc 2 dot uh, org forward slash configuration um, certifications and uh, forward slash cc or you can go to google and just type in isc2 square uh, isc2 space cc and you'll find it let me see if i can give you the link in the chat i i don't have access to the chat right now uh yeah it always walks me through all this other stuff i gotta do to get link uh access to that all right guys that's it for this one um thank you for watching i really appreciate all the questions um thanks a lot uh for for all your kind words and stuff and uh all the donations appreciate that thank you so much i've got a couple other questions on on tiktok let me see if i can answer those real quick um yes it's still a self-paced exam okay we're still talking about the ic2 cc uh, so I can get an entry level job with a CISSP certification. Um, can you get a, okay. So with the CISSP, it requires like five years of experience. So somebody's either got to vouch for you having five years of experience or, uh, so you're typically, if you have a CISSP, you don't have, you're not an entry level person. Now, if you happen to get I think you can sit for the test, but you they won't give you the cert until you hit all of these different requirements. But by the time you hit those requirements, you're no longer entry level, if that makes any sense. So you, I don't know if I answered your question. Let me see. You said, so I can get an entry level job with a CISSP cert. You, once you have a CISSP, you don't have to get an entry level job. You're not an, you're not an entry level person if you have a CISSP. So... So the, the certification we were talking about is called a an ISC2. Um, let me just show you what we were talking about. We're not talking about CISSP. We're talking about a certified in cybersecurity certification that's from ISC2 squared. It's this one right here. It, this is an entry level certification. You don't need any requirements before you go into this. If you're talking about something like a CISSP, there's actual requirements before you can even take the test before you even take the test and even if they allow you to sit for the test you have somebody has to vouch for you that you have a certain level of experience before they'll give you the certification something to that effect okay let me see hey bruce where would you start if you had to start all over again without any knowledge of cyber i would start with cloud right now cloud super hot man so I would what I would do right now if I was starting from scratch. It's a great question. I would number one, I'd go to A. I'd go to okay, there's a couple certs I would get. With no experience, no nothing, starting from scratch, knowing what I know now, I would start with the AWS cloud certification. That one, and then there's no one from Google called Google Google ITS. Let me see if I can let me just show you. I don't I don't want to be a liar here. Uh, one, the one is called, and let me, I'll explain to you why I would get these and you, it'll blow your mind and you'll, you'll follow exactly what I'm saying. It will blow your mind. So there's one called AWS certifications. So if you want to follow along with me, let me just show you what I'm saying, what I'm seeing right here. Oh, wait, let me go back. Okay. There we go. Okay. So AWS certifications, I just typed it in. And skip all the ads, skip all the ads. We want to go directly to Amazon.com site. Okay, so I would take this right here. See this AWS certification? So you can train on their site. I believe their training is free, and he, they even have a whole uh, path for you. This one right here, this cloud practitioner is the one I would take. And the reason why I would take, look at this. It's 90 minutes long. It only costs $100. I could take this right now. I could I could literally I'm thinking about it actually. I'm gonna take this test. The reason why I would take this one, one of the first ones I would take, is because in the last I just had five different interviews. All right. I'm not even count, counting the the uh, the screening interviews I had. I had like probably twenty screening interviews or more. But I had about five interviews. In in four 
out of the five interviews, they all ask me about cloud. Now, I'm an old head. Cloud is actually new for me. I have not dived, dove into it. I have a little bit of exposure to it, but not a lot, right? I don't. I know some of the difference between a PAAS and versus a SAAS versus a IAAS. Like, if you know what I'm talking about here, <laughs> like different platforms of cloud, like platform cloud as a service versus software as a service versus whatever as a service. Like everything as a service, planet Earth as a service, whatever the hell they're the terminology is. I'm an old head. Like I, this is new to this crap is new to me. Right now, virtualization's not new to me. That's been around, but cloud this and cloud that, like everything's going to cloud. And the biggest cloud service right now is AWS. They always ask me about that. And I had to be like, mm, I, that's not my, you know, but I can tell you this. Here's what I know, you know. They all ask me about it. So if I was starting from scratch, I'd do AWS. If I really didn't know anything, nothing at all and i was like a like starting from absolute scratch i probably take the same one i did when i first started which was a plus certification like if you know absolutely nothing about it then probably the best thing to take would be an a plus certification because that will get you at least knowledgeable on, on how computers work because you really need to know you need to know like the difference between ram storage and uh and the cpu you need to know, kind of have an idea of how CPU work. You don't have to know like how the addresses are mathematically algorithm, the al mathematical algorithm of how the CPU, you know, moves pixels from this side of the screen to another. Like it's not even that deep. Like it's just telling you this is how the RAM works, physical memory. Here's how it works with the storage versus the CPU. Here's how they all work to make a computer. You need to know what a computer is how they work, how to troubleshoot them. So A+, plus, CompTIA, A+, plus certification, one of the first ones I would take if I knew absolutely nothing. Because that will give you, after you take that certification, there's two different ones that you have to take in order to get the A+. Plus. Once you know that, you'll be able to troubleshoot a computer, any computer. Like, you'll be able to troubleshoot a, a laptop, a server, a, your phone. They're all computers. They all use the same components, essentially, uh, in different configurations. Uh, and then you'll have a solid understanding of how cloud works because it's also a computer. It's also a, it's a bunch of computers that are somewhere else over the Internet. That's, that's pretty much it. And then I would take that one. And then another one that's pretty hot is Google Support IT. I would take that one. I'll take a, CompTIA A+. I'd learn everything I need to know about that one. Take the test, pass it. I would learn um, – I would do Google Support IT. The basic one that they have out there, they got like two. I do the basic one. And then I would do cloud, AWS cloud practitioner. That's what I would do. And then the, after that, I, I put my resume out there. And then um, I, I try to get some. I would do either internship or I'd do a, uh, a um, entry level. I do entry level making 15 bucks an hour to get my foot in the door. To, and then I'd work there for like six months. And then I would transition to another organization. That's what I would do. And then I would, I would take my my experience from that place I worked six months. And then I would go work at another place, and then ask for more money. That's what I would. That's what I would do. Another thing, this one dude on TikTok blew my mind. So this dude had a brilliant strategy. And if you have the money to do this, this is the most brilliant strategy you could do if you have the resources to do it. Now this guy did. But he, he went to um, this college called oh, GWS, Governors, Western Governors University or something. It's a legitimate college. Like the government, when I was in the military, they were promoting it a lot. GWS, college, college, let me see. Western Governors, G, WGU, that's what it's called. So this, this, this dude, his name is Chris. He's one of the top cybersecurity guys out there. He went here to this college right here. He took a course in uh, cybersecurity. I guess they have one here. He did it in six months. It's not going to be cheap. Uh, he did an undergraduate in, in, I think, six months. Then what he did, WGU, that's right. Then what he did, this it's brilliant. 
So if you have the money to do this, this, this is this will get you six figures super fast. He took this, right? It took six months. It's not cheap. You know, I mean, you, you know, relatively speaking, it's not cheap. This is this is not bad for a college, to be honest with you. Uh, so he got an undergraduate in six months, accelerated course in IT. Well, he did one of these. And then I believe he took the IT certification with it. One, it, I believe he took one of these, if I'm not mistaken. Um, he took one of these. See, this cloud one would be dope right here. And look at all these certifications. You could take one of these certifications with it. That's what I would do. And then after you come out with a bachelor's degree or even a master's degree with one of these cloud certifications, and then you can you can possibly make six figures after that. That's in that's within a year, within one year. I think what he did was he did something called the OSC, OSCP, which is a super hard certification. I think he did this one right here. I believe he did something like this. And then he was able to get a six figures within a year, which is very impressive. And then he also took this dude. He's pretty impressive. I mean, this like there's some people who are this hardcore and this talented to do this. I don't think this is for everybody, but he took this certification called OSCP penetration test. It's one of I heard it's a pretty hard test, but uh, it's from offensive security. And it's a practical test where you have to hack live for 24 hours or something. And he got this certification. Look at this. Look at this course. <laughs> $1,400. So for all you guys complaining about my course being $200 damn dollars, look, look at this. Look at this. Feast your eyes on this. This is how much a course costs, baby. Don't complain about no $200 to me. This is how much they cost right here. All right, guys. I'm out.